Good morning, everybody, and this is your S&P 500 day trade setup for today. So uh, yesterday we did get a bit of a gap up, but then immediately we traced off that gap. And uh, right now, if you look at price action, we are bouncing between the 155 and the 33 EMA at the moment. So 33 and 66 is still in a bearish cross at the moment, or death cross as they call it. So um, nothing really much happening there. Then we also have this trend line, I've kind of adjusted it, not taking this high. Uh, sort of lining up these elements here because you can see last week there was clearly an area of interest and we did turn there um, yesterday. The tech stocks are still under pressure which is what's driving this at the moment. So for as long as tech stocks are under pressure this is exactly what is going to transpire. So so far this week big down, big up, big down, big up, big confusion. That's kind of the um, the moral of the story at the moment. Uh, a view still hasn't really changed. I suppose we was a bit of an opportunity to get in here for a little bit of a scalp to the upside. I uh, wasn't really keen on that move, to be honest. So, um, as I said, we need to clear, well, I said it yesterday, and uh, we need to clear 3870, uh, sort of up and back down to test it before I start looking at uh, longs on this pair. So, if we move down to the one hour, you'll see again. So whenever you see the moving averages like this, you can see we were down below them for two days and the diversion is huge. So in other words, the distance between them is massive um, and price. So price is all the way down here and the moving average is all the way up here. So when it is sort of controlled and with the moving averages, you, know, you kind of You've got a better view, you've got a better view of what's going on but when this kind of stuff happens this is always an indication that it's going down too quickly and that there is going to be a retracement and there was on friday we then broke up above the, um, the 155 ema the other moving averages hadn't crossed over came back to test the moving averages up came back to test the moving averages again so what's the next logical step we want it to come back and test the 155 and that's in this area here so that's 38.36. The key thing for today at the moment is the oscillators are crossing over. But that being said, I am a little bit reluctant to be trying to get into this market. Uh, we need to. Um, we actually need to wait for the rot on on the Nasdaq to finish. Uh, but in saying that, we do have an inverse head and shoulders here. But at the same time. We've got uh, some bearish momentum as well, but you know, we in and amongst the moving averages here. So for me, a couple of things, and I think we will look at the 15 minute for this. So the first one is obviously this area here of 38.36. So that is something that I would like to see tested and I'd like to see it hold. I don't want to see it like this. I want to see price come back onto it and hold it properly with a pin bar or some kind of structure on that. That will give you the confidence that we have a potential move to the upside. Stop will be below the low of the day and your first target is pretty much going to be uh, 38, so firstly 38, 38.70 then 38.80. Those are the ones. I suspect we're aiming for 3900 to be honest. So uh, first we'll need to claim 3900 and then we'll move on to 4,000. Uh, once we get to 4,000, I think uh, that's when we need to be very cautious about what's going on. But at the moment, this is really a buy the dips market. Really laborious at the moment. Uh, and you can see we sort of move down and then nice big move up, double top here, up. Uh, so, uh, well, you, you actually got the opportunity to, to get the short scalps on this at the moment as well, until such time as the trend reversal is confirmed. So we do have a confirmation on the 15 minute. You can see we sort of bounced around here, then broke away, came back to test. So we've tested the 155 on the 15 minute three times. First time, second time, third time. Engulfing, inside, engulfing. Okay, so that's three uh, pretty solid patterns or price action uh, structures that are indicating that we need to be watching for a move to the upside. We've got overhead resistance and overhead trend line resistance. So those also need to break. So yeah, it's pretty much first 38.70, and then we need to get above this high here of 38.81. So 
So that's the area we need to clear. Once we've cleared that, then we can have confidence of a move to the upside. So for me, definitely looking at this area here, 38, 36, uh, see if we can hold that at the moment. Uh, I think the, the critical aspect at the moment is yesterday, we did close above the 3800. You can see we did dip below it, but we did eventually close above it. So um, that's another thing it needs to hold. 3800 needs to hold, and then we should see some more upside. But that's kind of my view at the moment. It's a very much mixed bag on this. I think the, the Dow offers a lot more uh, opportunities at the moment. So the S&P for me needs to build some structure. Once it's built structure, I'm fairly confident it's going to catch up and hit the, the targets that we've got. But so we're going to have to be patient on this one. Okay, so yeah, that's it for me. Uh, definitely looking for opportunities to be long, not looking to be short, but I want confirmation first. And uh, once we get confirmation, I'll look at it. There's just way too much going on. There's also potential wedge forming and this downward trend line, you can see how well it's been respected. Okay, it's pretty much been respected for oh, since midway through February to now. So almost a month basically it's been respected. So this previous high of last week definitely needs to go before we even start. Well, no, not last week, like yesterday. Um, that definitely has to go before we start uh, looking for opportunities to the upside. Okay, anyway guys, that's it for me. Hope it helps and uh, we'll catch up with you later. Cheers for now.